In many kinds of software, you typically have some kind of background processes that perform some kind of uh, recurrent activities that does not require any user interaction. This could involve uh, some data processing, uh, moving data from one place to another, uh, performing maybe some scheduled activities or whatever else. So depending on the requirements you have, it might be required that this job needs to run on a desktop machine, so on the user's machine. Now there are many ways to create these cron jobs depending on the operating system, whether it is uh, Windows, Linux or Mac. On Windows, uh, the best way to create these kind of jobs is using Windows services. And if you are using .NET, uh, one easy way to do it is to uh, use Top Shell. So there is a package called Top Shell. It's a NuGet package. You can add it to your um, um, .NET uh, solution or project, and then it will, uh, you know, help you create a Windows service in the easiest way possible. And then you can focus on the business logic you have and the data exchanges that you have. So I'm going to show how to create a Windows service and then how you can create some kind of uh, background job. And then I'm going to simulate how you call a RESTful API to get some data just to simulate some kind of a cloud backend that you need to interact with. I'm going to use this website, JSON placeholder, just to provide some kind of uh, fake API for retrieving uh, some data. So I created a simple console application and uh, the easiest way to get started is just to copy the code that exists on the top shelves uh, documentation. So if you click show me the code, uh, then I can essentially copy paste this. Now, of course, to resolve the dependencies, you need to install the NuGet package. I'm going to use nlog later for logging, so I would also include the uh, top shelf nlog extension. And now we can test and start this from uh, Visual Studio and it will run as a console application. Okay, so the code here uh, constructs uh, some class that has some start and stop methods uh, corresponding to the server start and stop and also it runs as a local system and you set the description, the name and the service name. But until now we have not installed the service yet. We just ran the service uh, in development mode as a console application. Okay, so to install the service and run it as a Windows service separate from Visual Studio, you go to the directory where the uh, executable was built, which is uh, usually the uh, bin directory and I'm here also building in debug mode. So I you go to that directory and then you use the executable for the service to install the service. So these two commands will tell Top Shelf to install this as a Windows service and also to start it after installing. And then if I check my services list and I find this new service running and it's called stuff and it is corresponding to the name that exists here. Uh, now I can start working on the REST API client. Uh, but before that, uh, we need to uninstall the service. Otherwise, we will not be able to modify the app. So I'm going to use the same command, but instead of saying install start, I'm going to say uninstall. Uh, this will uninstall the Windows service. Okay, so I'm going to start by developing a client for the fake cloud backend here. And uh, I'm going to create a function that gets one to do from this uh, to do URI here. So back in Visual Studio, I'm going to create a class called to do. And then I'm going to create another one uh, for the client code.
Uh, read as async is an extension function that exists in this Nougat package. So I installed uh, this Nougat package called Microsoft ASP.NET Web API client to get this function so that we can deserialize the result into the uh, to-do object. Now for the background worker, what we need is uh, something that starts and stop uh, based on the Windows service. So once the Windows service is started, it needs to start. And then once it's stopped, it needs to stop. And we can, I'm going to use tasks for that. Um, and also well, I'm going to use nlog logger so that we will log what's happening uh, while the service is running. And uh, as I said, the business logic that we're going to simulate here is calling the backend service using the backend client we've just created. And I'm not going to do anything with this data. I'm just going to output it to the uh, log.
Now we can install the service again so that we get the updated functionality. And now we find that the service is running and also the logs are being stored in the file.